Hey everybody, so I'm here to talk about sport climbing anchors. This is a video that I've been meaning to do uh, since I actually started my channel a long time ago. Uh, sport anchors are a very basic skill of rock climbing, really any type of rock climbing, single pitch or multi-pitch, if you are climbing a multi-pitch route that involves sport anchors. And uh, I wanted to cover some basic sport anchors uh, that start basic and then move into more advanced anchors that you can use for bolted anchors on a sport climb or a long multi-pitch or whatever you want. These right here are going to be my bolts. I didn't want to put actual bolts on this house so I have these little like tide command hanger things. Um, I don't actually know what they're called but they're just hangers that you can stick on your wall to hang up a jacket or whatever and then take off. Uh, these will work just about well for any sort of anchor you want to do uh, if you want to just practice anchors on a house or whatever. Um, all you have to do is get two of them and then you hang them up roughly a, a standard sport quick draw apart. And so that'll, uh, that'll pretty much give you a practice hanger at all and they are strong enough to do whatever you need to, anything but body weight, pretty much. For the context of all these anchors, I'm going to talk about, uh, this is the idea is I led up and I got to my anchor, and let's say that I have a decent stance. If you don't have that good of a stance, you can always clip to one bolt with a quick draw, clip your rope into that, and then call out take, and then you can sit on the rope while you build your anchor if you have a personal anchor set up on your harness already, you can clip to that and sit down on that while you build your anchor. But for clarity, I'm going to just act like I have a really good ledge here while I build my anchor so I don't really feel like I need to add a lot of security to myself. All right, first anchor I'm gonna talk about. This is the simplest one. That would be a, a clip, clip to one bolt, clip to the other bolt. And I have two sport quick draws. And the gates right here, are going to be facing away from each other. This is what we call opposite and opposed. If you took any sort of lead climbing class, uh, which you, you should, uh, if you do climb up to, for the sake of the scenario, since I'm climbing up, I would know how to lead climb. And so I would use a, uh, I would uh, know how to clip an anchor with the gates opposite and opposed. And um, anyone who builds sport anchors should know that term of opposite and opposed because that really comes up in climbing a lot where each gate is uh, facing away from each other and if they both get opened, they're opposing. So the gates are facing opposite ways and the gates are opposing each other. And so that way you know that the rope is actually trapped in both the carabiners. So I'll give you a close up to see what I mean uh, when uh, so that way you guys can see a, a little bit better than in the video. Another thing I am going to go over in this video is an anchor uh, assessment system. Uh, the one that I usually teach is called Serena, uh, which some of you may be familiar with. Others may have learned some sort of different acronym like STRADS, Earnest. Uh, you know, there's pretty much a million of them out there, but uh, I'm, I usually do Serena. Um, Earnest isn't a bad one, but that's sort of, uh, it has an extra uh, factor in there of timeliness, which I don't think is really useful for anyone who's just starting out building anchors. That's more when you get into the professional venue. Uh, but let me break into Serena right here to talk about what I mean. So Serena is a common acronym that you'll use for anchor, um, anchor understanding, building, and also uh, in order to test the quality of your anchor. Uh, every anchor I'm going to show you in this video is already passed the Serena test, and uh, most sport anchors already have that sort of idea of Serena. And when you go into further um, higher uh, forms of anchor building, like trad anchors or static ropes or rope anchors or whatever, uh, then you'll sort of be, you'll get a good grasp on these different elements of aspect of Serena. But uh, right now I'm going to give you a more or less sort of overview of what, what I'm going for here. So anyway, uh, back to Serena. Uh, the S in Serena stands for solid. And that refers to the, P, the gear that's left in the wall, the bolts of the anchor. And so 
what we're going for here is if you test the hanger of the bolt, make sure that it doesn't spin. Make sure that uh, the hanger is solid. The bolt itself, the head of the bolt, you want to look for rust or anything that might give you any reason to doubt its strength. Also look at the quality of rock around you. Um, if there's cracks running through the head of a bolt and all the way down, that could be quite a good reason to not trust that bolt. As well as if we have horizontal crackage from here uh, across both bolts, that would give you an idea to not trust that anchor in general. Now usually route setters and route developers are um, pretty good about the rock quality that they find for their bolts and most of them understand rock quality very well in order to place good bolts so that's kind of not um not a huge thing to worry about in most single pitch or other sport climbing venues but it is something to worry about on bigger longer multi pitches where maybe they gave you a bolted anchor but the rock quality is something what tricky or a little on the uh, a little on the sketchy side and at that point when you're climbing those sort of routes you'll have the knowledge and the experience to sort of judge the anchor and be able to build whatever sort of anchor you feel safe on uh, for the sake of most people just starting out with anchors like what this video is for the bolts ought to be in a good spot with good rock around them but they are still susceptible to corrosion and rust and so if you find a bolt with some reason that you'd be worried about that rust on the outside not so bad but rust further down into the rock, that's something to worry about. Uh, most companies, or uh, there are a lot of uh, not-for-profit and other organizations out there that will go out and replace bolts at popular climbing destinations that are usually single pitch sport. And so most of the areas that you would get going starting out at uh, usually have nice new equipment there. Keep in mind that you may not also run into bolts um, at the top of a climb. Sometimes they're cold shuts or they could be like what I call lower offs. Some people call them lower offs, which are just chains with a carabiner on that you can clip the rope to and then lower down. And um, if you're planning on using this anchor for multiple top rope laps, then yes, you wanna leave your own material to hang the rope on and only use that material for when you're lowering off, which I'll, I'll get to that in later videos on how to clean all your material back. Anyway, so, um, back to back to serena so we've talked about s pretty extensively now we're moving into the e of serena one of the e's which is for equalization and this has to do with the direction of fall or the direction gravity will pull you in if you were to fall if uh in this instance you can see how if i tug down i'm not going to tug down too hard because i don't want to rip these things off but if i tug down straight down from my anchor that's my direction of fall i want both of these legs of an anchor of the anchor to be pulled uh, down in a roughly equal way if there's a little bit of difference that's kind of no big deal what we want to avoid is something like you can see how going off to the side this anchor this leg is getting all the load and this leg has pretty much nothing so that's what we want to avoid. And if you did have that situation, you would want to use a different anchor than just the two quick draw method. But I can tug down, and if both these legs are pretty much equal, then that's what we want. It's equal uh, distribution of the load between however many legs of the anchor we have. Now we move into R, serene. I always have to sound it out. So R stands for redundant. And this is something that's really big in climbing. You'll hear redundancy a lot throughout any of any form of climbing and some people sometimes even take it overly seriously in my opinion but uh, redundancy is still a big part of your anchor and the idea with that is uh, if one of your legs fails usually due to the gear that's left behind you can see how I have another leg backing that up yeah and it works for this one too if that were to fail this one were to fail that one's backing it up and so that's the idea in the very basic form of redundancy. There are a lot of ways you can play around with your anchors to make something still redundant. Um, and uh, it just keeps on moving on and on from there. But for most sport climbing setup where you have two bolts, you just want to make sure that your master point, which is the part that the rope goes through, that's another vocab term, master point, 
um, is going in to attach the two legs that are off on two redundant pieces. All right, now the E and the N, the other E and the N of Serena go in to make non-extending. And this refers to your master point. You want the master point to extend as little distance if one of your legs fail. So in this case, you don't really have too much extension because if this were to fail, you only get a little bit of swingage going over before this leg catches. So non-extending, that's what you want with your two static pieces uh, of your anchor so that way you don't get a whole lot of movement from the master point. If I had a bolt way up here and I had this bolt clipped and then this one were to fail, you can see my master point, if you track it, that's a lot of extension on the master point and that's what we want to avoid because that can lead to other problems and depending on certain materials that you use, they could even damage or break the material and then you're really out of luck right there. So yeah, just making sure each leg is equal and the master point is not extending, big thing about it. Uh, the A in Serena is uh, angle and what I'm referring to here is the internal angle of the pieces. Now that kind of doesn't matter as much for bolted anchors because generally route setters know how far apart to put the bolt and um, you don't really have to worry too much about angles in pre-existing bolts. But there are still uh, bolt anchors out there where they're maybe this far apart and maybe that was because they're stuck for good rock or the, the rock juds out right here or something like that. And so you can see how this angle uh, we want our internal angle to be about 60 to 90 degrees, nothing really more than 90. And so this angle is way more than 90, and what that does is it puts more inward pressure on the bolts, which aren't exactly designed for it. Uh, generally speaking with how strong bolts are and how strong equipment is, I mean like this wouldn't really be the worst thing in the world, but we can easily improve this situation by building a, a different anchor with a longer material that goes further down, like the master point right here, that eliminates that problem. And then you can use your equipment to the full strength that it's actually rated for. And so that's why, that's, that's the idea, is keep the internal angle less than 90 degrees. And you don't even have to keep it 60, you can have it as close as you want, that doesn't matter, but you just don't want it going super wide. So like, yeah, less than 90 degrees is really the big thing to keep in mind. All right, so moving back to my anchor I chose right here. Uh, this is a very common anchor that you'll find. Pretty much every rock climbing gym uses this anchor to lower off the top. And this is a really great anchor for lowering off the top. Uh, two quick draws, easy to clip into with one hand. And um, it's still, you could easily top rope on this, but I'd be worried about features of the rock, and this does depend a bit on your area, but features of the rock sort of pushing into the gate and opening it up, which could make the rope pop right out, and then you have a problem on your hands. And so that's kind of the only drawback to this anchor. If you guys are, and that's more for top roping, if you're planning on top roping on this anchor. Uh, if you're just all taking lead climbing laps, leading up, clip, clip, lower off, pull the rope, then that's really no big deal. But if you're gonna top rope on this anchor, you really don't want those gates to be interrupted. And so what you can do is, either um, shoot, like use it on specific terrain, like overhanging terrain where the gates hang out in space and there's really gonna be no feature with it, or you can add a bit of security to the bottom carabiner of this gate right here. And for that, I have some pre-built quick draws right here. <laughs> so these are what we call locker draws. They have locking carabiners in the bottom. And uh, I have non-lockers right here, but you could take these carabiners out and put locking carabiners in there as well. Um, uh, it's also acceptable to just keep the same non-locker that was on these quick draws. And uh, you can also buy really long dog bones. Some people like having them like twice as long, you know, for locking quick draws. But essentially I just stuck locking carabiners on my quick draws. You do lose two quick draws. So if you ever want to like, if you ever are on a route where you need 12 quick draws, you're either gonna to need to buy some new quick draws or use a different anchor. So that's a little something. This undoubtedly is the cheapest method because you already have like 12 quick draws with you. And uh, this one would be just sort of getting uh, a few 
a little bit of extra material. All right, so this one's pretty simple. After you clip them to both your bolts, you clip in both uh, lockers, then you lock them down. And then this just adds a bit of extra security. The idea here is if uh, there is rub on the rock, it's gonna be a lot less likely to interrupt the gate, open it up and spill the rope out. And so this is really nice if you're on like vertical or slab terrain and you still wanna stick with your two quick draws because the master point carabiners rub around a whole lot and they move around a lot more than these ones up here. Me personally, I never in really any of my anchors use locking quick draws for the bolt um, for the bolt side unless I have a reason for it. So my fallback is non-lockers, but um, if I have some piece of material that's sort of pushing in this gate, then I can either spin the carabiner around so that way the spine is bumping into that, or I could replace it with a locking carabiner, or both may not be a bad idea. And so uh, having locking carabiners at every single point is a little bit uh, overkill in, um, in the current opinion. Do whatever feels best for you, whatever makes you feel the most comfortable. It really doesn't make too much of a difference, doesn't cost a lot of extra money to add lockers and your own separate locker draws into the system. Either way, um, so this is pretty much the exact same as the last quick draw setup except without uh, with the addition of the lockers. It still doesn't really solve the problem of if we have some climb that goes way off to the side this way or that way and uh, doesn't allow us a lot of chance for equalization for distribution between the loads. So uh, the next anchor I want to show you uh, allows you a bit more freedom in that sense. So for this next anchor, you just need an alpine draw or a single length runner. It's called a single length because you can throw it over your shoulder and it fits just about right. And then two carabiners. So what I'm going to do is clip my carabiner in. I can clip my other carabiner into the bolt as well. I take my sling and you find that bone right there or the uh, the bar tacking. That's what we call it now. Clip it in and then just uh, pull it down. Just find a place to put a little overhand knot in it and clip it up to the next carabiner. At this point, I move the knot, I can move the knot anywhere on this anchor uh, into the direction of fall. Let's say it's again straight down there. And then at this point I'm going to clip two locking carabiners. So I'm going to scoop in this leg, scoop in the other leg, and clip a carabiner through both of them. Notice how it's a locking carabiner. It made it maybe kind of hard to see in the video. And then I'm going to clip another locking carabiner in. I do prefer for them to be same size. And I'm going to clip those in so again, the gates are opposite and opposed. And I can bring my rope. Clip that into both of them. And there we have it. And so the idea with this knot, this is a full serene anchor. The idea with having that knot right there is it makes each leg independent. So if this leg blows, you can see how that knot keeps this one attached. So the cool part about this anchor is I can move this knot up higher on one side versus the other. And I just, as long as I clip into both legs, you see now I have a master point that goes way out to the side and I would have to move the knot a little bit uh, down, but it would still be equalized. So this allows you to get a bit more range in the equalization of your anchor. Me personally, I probably, this is one of my lesser used anchors, but it really comes in handy when you get up, if you're on a multi-pitch, if you get up to that next station and then you realize you left all your other anchor materials down there. So you can either build a rope anchor or just pull out an alpine draw and build this quick anchor and then uh, bring your friend up. And in that case, what I like to do with these anchors is lock a carabiner in and use that as my master locker because this can definitely get crowded out, this top shelf. But either way, that's uh, it's worth playing around with. Maybe take a look at it and try to find where you prefer to use this anchor the most. And it is just another anchor to have in your toolkit. But um, You'll see later on with other anchors that we build uh, that this is 
kind of a little bit more of a fallback anchor other than a main anchor. All right, so for the next anchor I'm going to show you, you need two non-lockers and a double link sling, and then two lockers. And that is your full on anchor kit. Some people like to keep that all together like this. You can grab it, throw it on the back of your harness, and then pull it out when you get to the top of your climb. So what I'm going to do, first off, is I'll take out my non-lockers, clip those into the bolts, clip, clip, take out my double length sling. Again, I'm going to find the, uh, the bar tacking right there. I'm going to clip that into one of the carabiners, keep that bar tacking way up there. And then I'm going to pull all the way down and then use that end to clip into the next carabiner. So you can see how I have both strands down here in a nice little V. And uh, I'm going to, I have my finger down here holding in the direction of fall. And what I like to do is I slide up the sling, then do an overhand knot. You can do a, a figure eight on a bite if you want, but uh, overhand knot works just fine. And then right here, that's where you clip your two lockers into, which is then where you clip the rope. And then lock, lock, lock. All right, so this, this is one of the most common top rope anchors that you'll see out there. Um, it doesn't really have a fancy name. We call it the double length with an overhand knot. But this also help, really helps you see the anatomy of an anchor. And so starting from the bottom here, we have our carabiners clip in point. This little loop that is held where, the loop where we connect the rope to, we call that the master point of the anchor. It's kind of like the whole anchor comes down to this point. Here we have our knot, it's just called the knot. And then up here is a new term I haven't mentioned yet. These two things right here are the legs of the anchor, which you know. Up here I have the option of the top shelf and the option of the bottom shelf. And that's simply clipping a carabiner into, you know, I got a carabiner on me, clipping a carabiner into each leg up here. Yeah, and I'll have a close up for that so that way you guys can see it better. And so we call that the top shelf of the anchor, or of course you can have the bottom shelf too. And uh, what that does is it allows you extra clipping space that's still redundant on your anchor, which is why you could, or you tend to see this a lot in multi-pitch settings, is because you have the option of the top shelf, the bottom shelf, and the master point to clip into, which gives you a lot of options. Sometimes you can clip yourself into the master point and belay off the top, or vice versa, and clip your friend into whatever. So it just gives you a lot of options. For the sake of top roping, we just clip into this bottom loop, and then we call that good. This is just the most common anchor. Or, uh, it's sort of phasing out because I have, uh, people have been getting more into the quad anchor, which we'll see in a little bit. All right, so for the next anchor I'm gonna show you, you need, again, two lockers, two non-lockers, and a double length sling. So same exact material as before. Got my anchor, I got up here, I'm gonna clip, clip the carabiners. I kinda like just clipping them right away to get them out of the way. Take my double length, and as usual, find the bar tacking again. Put that into here. Pull down to find the, the, you know, the middle point, halfway. Put that into there. And then now I have my classic V. And what I'm gonna do is instead of isolating all four of them and tying them into a knot, I wanna have a bit more movement in my anchor. So if I could have the master point here with both the legs being equal, as well as here, then that gives me a bit more options. For example, if you have a really wandery top rope route and you have to move maybe 30 feet left to 30 feet right or so, then you uh, would want to, you could use this anchor to keep everything equalized while you're climbing up. As well as um, if you have maybe, uh, it's gonna be kind of hard to see in the video, but if you have like a, a corner that you're climbing and your anchor is up here and there's another climb on this side, then you could set up your anchor in the middle use it for this corner climb, and then flip the rope over the corner onto this side. I hope that makes sense, but it is another useful application of this specific anchor. The idea with this one, like the evolution of it, was that someone a long time ago, not that long ago, figured out if you take the inside strand 
of your V and give it a half twist, you get this fun little X thing, which they call the magic X. You can clip a locker into that. And then if you slide this around, or you can slide it around everywhere, and you see how the legs stay equalized between them. The only problem is if you do have a bolt blow, uh, you have like as much extension as you could possibly get with this anchor. And that's a huge problem, right? If you take a, like a, you know, a half a sling fall on this double length sling, that amount of force that you build up could cause quite a bit of problems. And so what they figured out is if you put little limiting knots in the legs, then you can avoid that problem. So what I'm gonna do is find the sort of middle point of where I want my directional anchor to go. And I can sort of mark it. I have to take this out, throw a, just a little overhand in, put that one back, go to this one, do exactly the same, throw an overhand knot in. I'm gonna make them loose right now because I always have to adjust them. You see how they're kind of a little offset, so I'm going to just push this one up a bit, bring this one down a little bit, and there we have it. Now you may be saying, well, that's pretty close to the master point, but you really don't need too much, like 30 feet of movement down at the bottom of the climb is only gonna be like five inches up here. So you really don't need a whole lot of space in your, in your master point where you clip your rope. Another uh, pitfall of this is if you clip into both of them, just like that, and then this piece breaks, you're gonna die. So um, you gotta watch out for that. Make sure that you twist this inside loop, give it that little half twist, and then clip your carabiners in. Again, like always, opposite and opposed. And then that way, and you can test this out when you build the anchor, just unclip one of these and see if this doesn't fall apart, but you can see how that makes all the, the lockers stop in place. And now I get my rope in there. Whoops, there you go, I can't hold the, the anchor. And you see how that moves around just like that. So this is probably the most specialty of the anchors I'm gonna show you. And it, uh, it only has a few um, good examples, like I mentioned earlier, about when it would be good to use this. But again, it is another good anchor to have in your bag of tricks for when you do come up into those situations. So with the last two anchors I talked about, it involved always having um, the, the sling pulled down into a V. One huge pitfall of anchor building in general is this. Yeah, we call that one the American Death Triangle. And the idea here is there's no redundancy, right? Because I can tie a knot I could tie whatever knot I want right here. And even if the master point is redundant, you see how I have two loops right there, uh, this sling is not. So the idea is if this gets cut, then you're just out of luck. And uh, as well as on a less lesser note, it does, it performs the weakest of all the anchors because by pulling this in, it doesn't allow the sling to have full strength on the anchor by being pulled in the V. <laughs> There's math behind that, but um, I, I can't describe it too well. I'm not really much of a math guy. But it is the weakest anchor setup you can have, whereas the V helps use all the material to its strongest suit, as well as making it redundant in the first place. So just avoid the American Death Triangle is what I'm getting at. Some people prefer building their anchors out of cord um, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, I personally don't do it. Uh, I used to do it a whole lot, but I, I started just phased out of it. And in order to um, first build a, an anchor with a cord, there's a number of different ways to do it. I'm just gonna show you one, which is the most common way. First thing is tying off the ends. A lot of times, since I don't use my, don't ever have my cord tied, in order to just tie a quick knot, I do the flat overhand. And you can watch, uh, I think I talk about this in my knots video, or you can watch another video on how to do that. And then I would use that as a full loop of cord. Another common way to tie cord, if you wanna just tie your cord together and then leave it like that forever, is with the double fisherman's knot. So this is 
also like really hard to sort of get your mind around. I'm just gonna demonstrate it. And then I think uh, I talked about it in my knots video, or you could uh, just check out another video about it. Seems simple, but man, it's just hard to learn. One pet peeve of mine is when people leave too long a tails on their cord because this is just separating out cord that could be used as part of the full loop. It's making useful cord useless. So I like to, after I tie the knot, just clean it up a little bit. Still making sure that the knot is tied uh, cleanly and correctly though. So you can see how that's a bit more, a uh, bit less cord that's like lost to not being able to being used. And then um, it's still enough to have an ample amount of tail to avoid the knots from going back in and coming untied. I mean, like after two or three times of using this, this knot becomes welded anyway, and it's like not going anywhere. And of course, the way I know I tied this double fisherman's right is both the X's line up like that. That takes some practice, and I don't want to demonstrate it. This video is long enough as it is. So what I did is with the full length of my cord is I just looped it in uh, in half. And I got a lot of options right here. This is about the size of a double length sling. So I could literally just tie an overhand knot and then have the same doubled over with master knot right here. That would be a perfectly acceptable, perfectly fine anchor. And I guess it does have a bit more redundancy because it, you know, has a whole bunch of strands here, but. Another cool thing you can do with cord is to build a quad anchor. So what I'm gonna do, the, the quad anchor, sorry, I was getting ahead of myself. The quad anchor really combines the best aspects of the Magic X with limiters with the overhand, with the uh, ta, double length into an overhand one. And so what I can do here is I, I pull down, I doubled up my cord, pulled it down in my V like before, I'm going to do an overhand, and again I'm making them loose because I may have to adjust them, but I'm going to do overhand on each leg, definitely have to adjust it, there we go, and now we have the quad anchor. What this allows me is it um, gives me a whole bunch of movement for one as well as it gives me a ton of real estate on my master point, or even master points, because it actually does have two. You can see if I hold it like this, we have two strands, which gives me two separate redundant master points, which is uh, really nice for when you're multi-pitch climbing, because you can have, like I'm clipped right here, my clove hitch, and I have my belay device on this other strand. Or I can, once I belay my friend up, stick them on this side while I have this side. And just having all that real estate in your anchor is really nice. However, for top roping, we do it slightly different where we clip three strands from the master point, making sure to leave this one free. Do that, throw the rope in, lock, lock, lock. That's like a big thing. Make sure you leave this one free because if this bolt blows, that traps there you go, that traps all the carabiners in the actual anchor. Whereas if you clip all four of them, you get that same problem with just slipping out. All right, so here we have it, the, the Magic X with limiters. You can see how it lets you move all over the place and uh, gives you tons of real estate for your master point. Another great thing about this anchor is you can, if you wanna move on to the next climb, unclip and then move to your next climb. That's here are the new climbs and clip them back in. And generally, you may have to move these knots around slightly, but if, you, if you're moving between all these anchors that are just two horizontal bolts, this you can leave this anchor together all day and just untie it at the end of the day. So generally, people will use cord for this, uh, for this anchor of the quad anchor, which is a very nice uh, application of the cord. But I personally really like using quad length slings to tie a quad anchor. I'll just demonstrate with these same two carabiners. So there's a couple different ways to tie a quad anchor. I actually have a specific video for how I tie this quad anchor, which I, I tie a different knot right here. So that way it eats up a little bit of material for bolted anchors. 
so that way you see how my my master point is right here versus being down here and so uh, you can find that video on on YouTube I, I got it somewhere in my page and so this helps keep the anchor a little bit smaller which is really nice in multi-pitch climbing but if you want to keep things simple you just start with your double length half that one over into each carabiner and then same deal is just tie a uh, stopper knot here and a here just an overhand knot I should say and then you'll uh, have the same sort of quad set up as your cord and you don't have to deal with the extra complexity of making it slightly shorter that's how I prefer to tie my quad anchors now and I usually just keep the cord on my harness for rescue well that's all the anchors I wanted to talk about uh, keep in mind that there are plenty of other single or sorry bolted anchors out there including ones where the bolts are connected or vertically placed bolts but those just aren't too common at beginner areas and I really wanted to make this video specifically geared towards beginner climbers um, so that way they had some sort of reference to go by uh, after they take their single pitch uh, anchor class. And that's really what I would recommend is take a class. They'll teach you either a variation or a number of these anchors. These are usually the ones that are taught in beginner classes. And uh, it pretty much covers the gambit of what you're gonna be doing for the first year or so you're out climbing uh, on your single routes, uh, as well as some of the more complex anchors that may not be taught, uh, they can come into play if you do plan on going into higher forms of climbing. But I just wanted to give a good baseline of a, or a bunch, I think like six different anchors that you can use while climbing. And um, you'll see plenty of people doing other weird stuff out there. Just bring it in to a trusted person, a mentor, a professional, or whatever, and ask them like, oh, hey, they did this anchor. What, what do you think about it? Is it safe? Is it good? Or whatever. Um, and then you can learn a lot that way just by watching other people. So I'll have some more videos coming up. I'm sure I'm going to do one about how to clean anchors. Again, it's a supplement for those who have taken classes and don't quite remember over the winter. And so I'll be uh, putting that out soon. And then if you want me to go over any other sort of beginner, sort of uh, moderate skills, then let me know. I'm always willing to help people out with what they just learned and try to keep it a little safe out at the crag. So thanks again, and I'll see you guys in the next video.